Black Mountain College was this tiny school. And because of it, a new breed of craft makers virtually moved from Carolina to New York. In 1933, a progressive classics professor named John Rice and a group of faculty and students decided to set up an alternative school outside of Asheville, North Carolina. John Rice wanted the arts to be at the center of the college's activities and identity. The problem was is he didn't know anything about art. He didn't know any artists. So he went to his friend, Philip Johnson, who was the curator of architecture at the Museum of Modern Art. Philip Johnson said to John Rice, I know who is the perfect man to work for you. It's Joseph Albers. The Nazis had just closed the Bauhaus, which was Europe's premier art and design school. That meant that Joseph Albers was without employment. So Joseph and his wife, Annie Albers, who was a master weaver at the Bauhaus, come to North Carolina. I think in retrospect, it seems completely visionary. People like John Rice, like Joseph Albers, were thinking about progressive education, this idea of learning through doing. Black Mountain College wasn't an art school. It was an experimental liberal arts college that had placed the arts at the center of the pedagogical experiment. A typical day would have included all of the faculty and students taking their meals together because a hierarchy didn't exist. A typical day might have included taking a walk in the mountains with the mathematician Max Dane because he liked to lecture in a non-classroom setting. A typical day almost always would have included the hearing of music. And in the evening after dinner, the tables and chairs were cleared and music was performed. The community entertained itself. This idea that art wasn't something you made for an audience, you were both the audience and the maker, and that on any given day, you could be both or either, was essential to this way of thinking about art as not being separate from life, but art as being woven into the fabric of your life. Black Mountain College is the beginning of the American avant-garde, and performance is at the core of the American avant-garde. Through John Cage and Merce Cunningham, performance really takes off at Black Mountain. And what performance does is say, not only is there no distinction between art and music and dance and lighting and costume design, but there's also no distinction between art and life. That had a profound effect on the artist Ruth Asawa. She didn't make a distinction between having her life and making her art. You didn't go to a studio to make your work and then you raised your children somewhere else. There was just this merger of art and life. That comes directly out of her Black Mountain College experience. Ruth Asawa made these rather extraordinary crocheted wired baskets, these sort of big bulbous shapes. And she came up with the shape while she was a student in Merce Cunningham's dance class. She started the first art program in the San Francisco public schools. How to make things, how to think through problems with material, form, resolution. Sa'awa thought those were essential skills for being a curious and cogent human being. This idea was a really fundamental aspect of the college. At Black Mountain College, the experiment was, what would it mean to teach everyone to think critically, which is, of course, what you're learning to do when you're an artist? So if you have a German guy who's been forced out of Nazi Germany teaching American kids how to think about making choices, what you have is someone thinking about what is 
democracy. Because the most important thing we do in a democracy is we choose who will represent us. Black Mountain College wasn't interested in producing artists. It's interested in producing citizens. That so many people ended up artists is like the kind of, you know, frosting on the cake. There was a rich pottery tradition in that part of the Carolinas. Clay was readily available in the soil, and the potters who came and taught at Black Mountain, Karen Carnes, principal among them, made work and took it into town and sold it. We as potters in the studio were not respected by the students because you know, they were at the cutting edge of everything, and we were just this old-fashioned clay they didn't respect. It didn't matter, though. It didn't matter to me, and I don't think it mattered to David, because we were in heaven. I mean, we were working. We had everything we needed. Karen Carnes had a profound effect on a number of students. Carnes made functional pottery and non-functional pottery. She made no distinctions between the two. Her functional pottery formed the basis of what people ate off of in the dining hall at Black Mountain College. Her non-functional pottery speaks to her witty, sensual, deeply sculptural sensibility. Karen Carnes was one of the wives sort of smuggled in, even though she was a fully participatory member of the college, she herself was not paid. The position of women at Black Mountain College is a vexed one. On the one hand, they were very much there. On the other hand, many of the women were spouses. Many of the women were not paid. Many of the women came and then taught because they could, but not because they had been invited to. So even though it was Willem de Kooning who had been invited to teach, it was Elaine de Kooning, who you see in all of the photographs where Buckminster Fuller is installing his first geodesic dome, and you can tell who's in charge. It's Elaine de Kooning. Even though Joseph Albers has the big reputation, it was Annie Albers who was translating all of Joseph Albers' classes, and she was writing in the Black Mountain College Bulletin and teaching weaving. I don't think you can underestimate the degree to which she influenced her fellow artists, including her husband. By the time Black Mountain College closes in 1957, New York has stolen the art world from Europe. Annie Albers had a solo show at the Museum of Modern Art. John Cage and Merce Cunningham are reshaping the imagination of what the avant-garde can be. Willem de Kooning goes back to New York and forms the club on the model of Black Mountain. Robert Rauschenberg synthesizes all of his Black Mountain teachers, Joseph Albers' color theory, Annie Albers' affection for the tactile, John Cage's experiments with chance, Merce Cunningham's deep physicality, and in doing so, Rauschenberg invents the combine which is the thing that is neither painting nor sculpture, but some kind of glorious marriage of the two things. And then, of course, Joseph Albers is the head of the art program at Yale. And the Albers program at Yale is a program that he consolidated and developed and perfected at Black Mountain College. And most art programs in this country still carry the trace of Black Mountain College. 